Hi, welcome back, Wellcube family. My name is David Sidisa, and today I'm gonna to be showing you the walking the rod technique on the six inch rollout. All right, so I've got a six inch schedule 40 pipe here. You can see we got it pretty much prepped for, you know, your normal stick weld. And I got about a 16th land, and I'm about to run about a 16th gap as well. I'm gonna be using 6010 1 8 for the root, and then from there, from our root pass, I'm gonna go ahead and fill it all in one shot with uh, 3 16 70 18. I'm gonna go ahead and start tacking this coupon up. Again, I got about a 16th gap. I like running a tighter gap. And if you guys have the opportunity, you know, it's not always feasible, but if you can always tack in the same direction, especially on a rollout, you know, you're going to be going all one way. The last thing you want to do is be tying into a keyhole. It just makes it that much harder once you start getting to that tack. It's going to want to open up. You're going to have to start kind of whipping it. You might get excessive penetration in that area where you're trying to close it up. So if you can avoid it just by simply tacking same direction, go ahead and do that. Check out weldlife.com and shop all welding gear shown in this video. All right, so when I tack this coupon up, I actually tacked it all in the same direction each time. That being, you know, at the end of our tack, we have a keyhole. You can see, you know, a rod fits right in there. When you're running, you don't want to tie into another keyhole. You know, it's going to get really open, getting close to your tack. You'll have a hard time closing it up. You know, you want your tacks all facing the same way. Once I run over, tie, tie into this tack and continue going. And then that keyhole is going to let us restart right here and continue going until we run out of rod. All right, so we're gonna, gonna go ahead and start on our route here. You know, I'm gonna basically be kind of on top. I will kind of be going on the downhill progression. That's what's allowed in our WPS that we're gonna be using for this. Be going slightly downhill for the most part. Sometimes if I need more heat, I will be rolling up. If I need to cool it off, I will be rolling a little bit more down on the side. And a big thing to get used to when you're running a 6010 route like this is just the sound. Right there, you heard the difference when I was on top of the tack versus when the actual heat's going through and burning, making sure we're burning our inner edges, soaking in a nice root here. So if you start seeing your arc coming towards you and all your heat, you know, you know you're not burning down anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and start a little bit on the bead, start warming it up again, drop back into our keyhole, and then just continue rolling, putting in our root. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up where we started here. Close it up. Keep running over our tack here where we grind it down. Stop. All right, as you can see, we grinded our root nice and clean. I ended up, you know, turning our grinder a little bit side to side just to open this up just a little bit because we are gonna be filling it all in one shot with this uh, 3 16 70 18. All right, so we're gonna fill this pipe up all in one pass here. You know, we are gonna be rolling out, so technically, yes, we are running flat the entire time. But, you know, we're welding a piece of pipe. This piece of pipe isn't flat. So if you see, I got three lines marked here. Ideally, this is where, if your puddle's around here, you're pretty much running flat. If you're back over here, you're actually running a little bit uphill. If you start running more towards this line here, where your puddle's over here, you're actually running a little bit downhill. And you can run slightly downhill with the 7018 as long as the slag does not get in front of you. You know, you wanna do something like that. If it's getting too hot, you're gonna to wanna to be on the downhill side. If you're not feeling enough, you need to be more on the uphill side. And if everything's running pretty good, you'll probably most likely be hanging out right here in the flat side. Just to kind of give you guys an idea of the movement here. So, you know, once we have the stinger on, we're gonna, we're gonna be basically walking this rod in this kind of a manner and what that's going to do is basically aim our heat to our sides not in the center where we're very thin right now you know directly in the center all we have is our 6010 root that's grinded down you know it's very thin so we're going to be aiming the heat at the bevel edges here at the bevel walls pretty much so we're gonna go ahead and start our fill. You know, this is the fun, but a little bit scary part. You know, it is a lot of amps, a lot of metal, but when you get the hang of it, you can really run through one of these welds. You can see I'm having to manipulate this rod quite a bit. You know, basically walking the rod backwards 
as I'm rolling. That way I'm aiming my heat away from the center. Now you do have to be very quick, very swift. You have to be watching that puddle very closely. You know, and a lot of you might say that, you know, this is not allowed, that you can't be depositing this much metal at once. You know, if your WPS allows it, then you're allowed to do it. So now I'm actually going to grind here at our, our basically our stop and I'm actually going to grind deep enough to where it gives me a little bit of time to kind of refill, build that puddle. I don't want the fill to be all lumpy so I usually grind down pretty deep and then on my start, you know, I usually grind back about a half inch just because it is difficult to start this rod. You know, porosity can be a tendency especially with that large diameter that it is. Alright, we got our puddle going. You know, and a lot of you might be asking why? Why would you be doing something like this? You know, in a fab shop where you want to knock these welds out and you need to get them done, you know, this is a great way to do it. You're depositing a lot of metal at once, and if you do it correctly, it's a clean, solid weld. You know, it'll pass x-ray, it'll pass phase array. I'm going to use this wire wheel to get this slag out of here. You know, it looks like it's really stuck in there. It really isn't, but we're going to use this wire wheel. You know, I'm going to aim it down, knock all that slag to the floor. All right, so we got our fill in there. It's pretty much nice and flat, but you know, we do have a little bit of a bump on our stop and our start. So what I'm gonna do is just make it as even as possible so our cap comes out even smoother. So you wanna stagger your starts and your stops. So, you know, basically I only have two. I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees, you know, start 90 degrees away. Same thing, I got it at 235 amps, same settings. Then I do the same thing and just try to leave a nice smooth cap. You know, the, the rod does sound a little different. It's burning fine. It's a different sound that you may be used to. All right, so burned our first rod on our cap here. Again, grind the stop. And what I usually like to do, grind it deeper. That way I don't get a bump when I go to tie in. And just establish a puddle, make sure the back of the puddle ties into where you grinded. And then again, just a nice and easy motion. You may have to oscillate very slightly side to side, but just kind of let the puddle do the work. You know, the puddle looks huge behind the hood. You know, you just continue to keep a steady pace. Watching the sides, watching your puddle, try to keep it all looking the same. Alright guys, so there you have it. I showed you guys how to use the walking the rod technique on the 6 inch rollout. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like any of the cool gear you saw here, you know, don't forget to visit wellife.com. <laughs> I already know you.